That's Bell, Scott, Kelly, and Whitfield, and Muhammad. A couple transfers in there, Olivia. We'll start to see our first look at some new members of the Ducks. Which is going to be super exciting. And something that's also really interesting about Warner Pacific's lineup is that they are starting three forwards and only two guards. And this is probably in order to attempt to try to combat Oregon's height. Three of five Oregon starters are over six foot. And that height comes from a lot of the transfers, including Amina Muhammad, who's going to make her first start on the floor today, as well as Deja Kelly, who's 5'8", but nonetheless a threat for this Oregon offense and defense just all over the court. These are girls that can play any position, cover the floor, and it's going to be super exciting to watch. We head to center court for the tip. It looks like it will be Amina Muhammad tipping off for Oregon. She'll face off against Skylar Grosbeck. Tip is up, and the ball is won by Oregon. They'll start things off in possession here to begin their 2024 season. Quick pass inside with chance for Whitfield, who gets her own rebound. Pounded by the defense of the Knights, and it's going to end up with Warner Pacific, who will get it going back the other way. That's great defense by Warner Pacific. Huddling the ball like that, making sure that even though the def a defensive rebound was got, there's no chance for them to pass it back out because there's Warner Knights all over that ball. And Salas turns the ball over. It's picked off by Peyton Scott. It's going to set up a chance, but Oregon unable to convert. Now taking it back, back the other way will be Grossbeck. McKeeley Tonkin over to Salas, again guarded by Bell. Salas to her right, heads for the basket, but it's no good. We have a whistle on the play. Looks like it's going to be Oregon basketball going back the other way. That's an excellent charge taken very early by Oregon's defense. That's exactly what you want to do is you want to establish foot position as long as you don't move those feet and you can get a charge that changes momentum for an offense there. Bell back to Deja Kelly, the new transfer for the Ducks. And over to Scott. Scott back to Kelly. Kelly inside. And it looks like the shot attempt will come from Scott. That one's good. And Alexis Whitfield working that foul line to either be able to pass to the right or left side of the wing, passing it beautifully out to Peyton Scott, who is wide open on the wing. Not enough time for Warner Pacific's defense to transfer over from one side to another. And great to see from Peyton Scott, who missed almost all of last season with a knee injury in her second year as a duck. Meanwhile, Grossbeck trying to get to the basket. We'll get it over to Saunders. Her shot is no good. Deja Kelly with an excellent block there, even though she was um, able to let Saunders get back door on her. She has such a long reach that she was able to stop that ball with a beautiful block. So Grossbeck to inbound. It stays with the Knights. Gets it down to McKeeley Tonkin. It's guarded by Whitfield. Shot clock running low. Tonkin puts up a shot, finds nothing. It's going to end up with the Ducks again going back the other way. Deja Kelly pushing the pace. Guarded by Salas and will now go to the bucket. Her first shot as a Duck is no good, but another whistle. Looks like Deja Kelly drew a shooting foul there, which is exactly what you need to do early on in the game as well. Deja Kelly is somebody that's going to take on anybody in the paint, no matter how tall you are, no matter how aggressive you are. If she sees that you're not able to get your feet set and she's able to go up, even if it's on her offhand, she's going to go for it. And now, again, she's at the foul line shooting too. It was a busy offseason for Kelly Graves in the transfer portal. Deja Kelly, the prize acquisition, hits her first free throw. Four seasons and 119 starts at North Carolina for Kelly. Comes to the Pacific Northwest to join the Ducks and misses her second free throw, but the rebound acquired by Oregon. It'll stay with the Ducks. We get it back to Peyton Scott. Bell for three. No good, and the rebound goes to the Knights. Sophia Bell had an excellent offensive rebound off that missed foul shot there. However, when she shoots a three like that, she needs to be able to follow her shot. And a turnover by Scott. She gets it to Kelly, who's no good. On the second effort, that shot put up by Muhammad. She's fouled. So Peyton Scott does an excellent job getting her hands to the basketball, tips that one away. Another turnover for the Knights. And Oregon will go to the line once again. It's Amina Muhammad shooting two. And that's something the Ducks are really going to enjoy this season is the height advantage that they have, especially as you can just see now by Muhammad, who was able to get that missed layup by Deja Kelly. When her shots aren't necessarily following, she has the height now to back her up and to back other guards up to ensure more offensive rebounds, more boards, and more shot attempts. Muhammad, the transfer from Texas. Her second free throw attempt is good. So she goes two for two and Oregon out to a quick 6-0 run to begin this game. Grossbeck for the Knights, back the other way. Looking to get to a spot. 
She'll get it away to Tonkin. Tonkin back inside. This one put up by Saunders. It rattles home. Warner Pacific's on the board at Matthew Knight. I really like that take by Saunders there. No matter that she's got a six-foot-plus girl in her face, she's willing to fade back and take that shot. Peyton Scott puts up the three. It's no good. Looking for a second shot from distance of the game. This one goes out of bounds. It'll end up with the Knights. Peyton Scott, again, one of those players that Oregon really anticipated having on their roster last year. However, fell down due to injury and is back on the court today. It'll actually be Deja Kelly to inbound. Gets it to Scott, whose shot is no good. The Knights do end up with it now going back the other way. It's Campbell again running the point. The size difference between these two squads, very evident as Campbell sent that one into the left shoe of Kelly. And it looks like Warner Pacific's doing their best to try to spread out this Oregon defense who's playing a very tight man-to-man. -man. As you can see, the more you can spread out different players, the better it is. And another turnover for the Ducks. It's Whitfield going back the other way. She lays it in off the glass. 8-2, to two, Oregon leads. More points off of turnovers for the Ducks. Alexis Whitfield is just a 6 foot 2 threat on the floor. She was all Big West first team last year at UCSB. She is phenomenal defensively, offensively. She's a threat all over the court. It's inside to Tonkin, but yet another turnover. This time it ends up with Bell. She's going to race to the basket, puts it up off the glass. No good. Rebound Whitfield. It looks like it went out of bounds baseline off of Warner Pacific. So aggressive defense for Oregon so far here tonight doing everything they can to force the turnovers, and it's been working out. And it's the first game of the season for Oregon, but something they need to do is slow it down, especially on a transition breakaway like that. Grosbeck was so playing super, super tight on Bell there. All she had to do was stop at the baseline, and it would have been in. Another attempt from distance for Scott. Rims out. It'll be Campbell back the other way for Warner Pacific. The Knights struggling to put points on the board here early as we cross the 620 mark in quarter number one. Campbell goes to her right, looking to set up the open shot for Grossbeck. It does not come. Fighting the shot clock. Finally, a shot goes up from Saunders. It's no good. Rebound Peyton Scott. Scott to Whitfield for three. No good. Left it just a little short. And that'll bring up our first set of substitutions. Looks like Kelly Graves is going to completely reset the lineup. Some new Ducks checking in. Katie Fiso, the freshman out of Seattle, Washington. Looks like Sarah Rambis also back in the game, the returner, as well as our first look at Ahis Etute. Nia Falatea, or Nani Falatea, excuse me, another transfer for the Ducks, checks into the game along with the gold medalist, Elisa Mevius. So a completely new look for Warner Pacific, who goes right to the basket. Tonkin's shot is no good. Rebound for Mevius. The German transfer looking to push the pace. It's going to be a three-point attempt there from Fiso. No good. Rebound right there by Falatea. Falatea out to Rambis. Rambis' is shot. No good. Rebound again by Mevius. To the basket, Fiso with the score. The true freshman gets to the rim and drains it. Yeah, Fiso's going to be the only true freshman right now out on the floor for Oregon. And that shows just how much Kelly has, or Kelly Graves has trust in putting a true freshman out with this such experienced team. But Fiso has the opportunity to truly learn from these veteran players, whether they're from Oregon or not. Campbell from the corner misses everything. It's going to be rebounded by Falatea. Falatea out of BYU get, gets it inside to Fiso. It's going to be a three attempted by Falatea. No good. Rebound there picked up by Atute. And another foul. A new duck on the court tonight is UNC transfer Deja Kelly, who Oregon head coach Kelly Graves is more than thrilled to have on the team. He says she is a prolific scorer and such a unique talent who elevates everyone around her, and we're certainly seeing that tonight. It's going to be a shot attempt, it looks like, coming up here from Solace. Solace instead gets it away to Tonkin. Tonkin tries to get to the basket, no good. A rebound there by Atute. The ball will stay with Oregon. It's Fiso, who's already scored once here in this exhibition. Guarded by Solace. Over to Sarah Rambis, who's looking to get it inside to Atute, who scores with authority at the basket, using that size to her advantage. Gets the bucket for the Ducks. And I misspoke before. There are two true freshmen out on the floor for Oregon right now. Sophia Bell, or excuse me, Katie Fiso and Faith Atute as well, who both have two points on the night, which is very impressive for being true freshmen. Skyler Grosbeck trying to get to the basket. 
No good as she was guarded by Rambis. But again, two freshmen on this roster for Oregon, both of them in the game right now. Fiso already scored. She was a 95 graded prospect out of Seattle. Gets to the bucket once already today. And Atute with the most recent rebound. Inbound now for Warner Pacific. Misses everyone. It's going to be picked up there by Saunders. So Emily Fortin going to try and get to the basket. It's blocked by Fiso. Fiso got a hand on it. It looks like it went out of bounds on her, but an athletic defensive play by the true freshman gets yep. the stop. Fiso looks really comfortable out there. You can see the ball just, just bouncing off her back there. However, that's still a momentum shifter. When you can get a block like that, hopefully Oregon can get the ball back here with that. It's going to be intercepted by Fiso again, using her speed to get across the court. Looking to go coast to coast, and she scores. So the energy Kelly Graves associated with Katie Fiso already evident in this exhibition. Another turnover for the Knights, and it's going to be Ducks basketball after an excellent turnover and score by Katie Fiso. Again, Katie Fiso just looking so comfortable, which is impressive coming from a true freshman who has not seen time on a college court like this. However, she played at Garfield High School. She was a nine, she had a 95 scout grade from ESPN coming into the season, and like Kelly Gray said, bringing a lot of energy to the basketball court. That time it was Falatea trying to get to the basket. It's going to be Warner Pacific ball. They find themselves trailing 14 to two here, with three and a half minutes remaining in quarter number one. It's Grossbeck pushing the pace the other way. Peyton Rohde, Eugene Native now in the game, looks to get it to Salas, but it's another turnover for Warner Pacific. There's Rambis going back the other way, looks to get to the basket, but is fouled. Another foul against Oregon as Rambis will go to the line. And Rambis, although she's a returning player, she had one start last year for the Oregon Ducks. She's coming in averaging three and a half points per game for this team. And another girl that brings the height, she's 6'3", looking to make an impact as a forward for the Ducks here. A lot of these players returning for Oregon are going to see increased roles from everything we've heard from Kelly Graves. That will include Sarah Rambis. He raved about the improvements she's made in the offseason, including this fall. The Rambis, as you said, Olivia, just three and a half points last year. She was one of the most used bench, op bench options for Kelly Graves, but not a ton of starts. We'll see if that changes in 2024-25. One of two on the free throws makes it a 15-2 lead for Oregon. And Oregon looking to put the pressure on this pressure here coming up the court, making Warner Pacific really have to work to get the ball moved to their offensive set here. And that's impressive. That's exactly what you want to see, especially from players who are young and trying to make a name for themselves who are new to this team. That's the point of an exhibition game. That's what you do. And Tonkin goes into Rambis hard in the paint. We await the decision from the officials, but it looks like it's going to be foul against Rambis. We mentioned the size disadvantage that Warner Pacific finds themselves playing at. It's tough when the game gets more physical, especially in plays like that in the paint. Oregon's been so aggressive all night long on defense. And you can see Rambis just got a little excited there, going for the ball, forgetting that she had a girl there. It's easy when you want to go for the ball to make a reach and make a foul mistake. So Tonkin to inbound. Dangerous pass, but gets it out to 14. Driving to the cup, no good. Rebound, Falatea. Just a lot of struggles from the Knights so far, just getting the ball through the net as Fiso will try another shot. It's good. Four pence off, points off the bench for Katie Fiso. The true freshman's shot looks smooth and ready for action here early in 2024. Fiso now leading the Ducks in points in this game. Again, can't say it enough, she looks super confident out on the floor today. Another turnover for the Knights. It's Mevius going back towards the basket. Euro steps to her left and lays it in. Elisa Mevius with a flashy finish. She gets it through the net. And another score for Oregon, who find themselves on an 11 to nothing run in the last 4.15. So Rody being hounded by the Oregon defense, forced to get it away, and it goes right to Mevius again. Mevius to Etute, who scores? Make it 21 to two to start this ball game for the Ducks. We're within two minutes left in the first quarter, but not going according to plan for Warner Pacific, who struggling to put points on the board. Yeah, and something Warner Pacific's trying to do is move the ball fast around in their offense, whether it's cross court just like that or move it inside the paint. But Oregon's doing a really good job at playing a tight man-to-man, -man, concealing their players and not letting them get these passes off. Tonkin across to Rody. Her shot, no good. Left it just short. And it's going to be a timeout. Yeah. 
So a new set of players take the court for Oregon. Looks like we'll get our first look at Ari Long. Sammy Wagner, another one of those returners for the Ducks, takes the floor. Peyton Scott back in the game, as well as Philippa Tilliander. So Kelly Graves, ample with his rotations here early, looking to get as many players involved as he can. Sammy Wagner, across court. It's Ari Long for three, no good. And the rebound will go to Warner Pacific. Long pass from Salas, and it goes through the hands of Saunders. Saunders says, my bad. Chance for the Knights to convert. They're unable to, and the score holds. And, you know, I don't hate that pass attempt from Salas, especially for when you're playing against a team like Oregon who is moving so fast-paced and constantly putting pressure. When you have even a slight breakaway um, from a defensive effort, you want to push the pace, and you want to try to move the ball. As Filipina Che checks in the game, doing her thing in the low post. Gets it to the basket, but it rims out. So a long pass from Campbell, set up by the miss by Che, but this one ends up with the Ducks after all as Ari Long takes it across half court. Playing pinball here, here early as that one bounces out of bounds. Campbell got a hand on it. Yeah, and in the game right now for the Ducks, it's Peyton Scott, Sammy Wagger, Philip Atiliander, Ari Long, and Philly Che. Me, Grossbeck, Saunders, Rody, and Campbell in the game for the Warner Pacific Knights. It's Tilliander just inside the three-point arc. Nice save by Long there. And a big rebound and attempt from Che. This one out of bounds, but it will stay with the Ducks. And Che just dominates in height over any of these Warner Pacific players. That doesn't mean you can neglect the form that you have to use when you're playing down at the block. You still need to make sure you're hitting the perfect square in the back of the rim. Instead, just throwing the ball up, you still have to maintain form. Scott gets it to Che, who scores. Took three attempts, but Philly Che is on the board. The centerpiece of this Oregon offense makes it 23 to two, as Warner Pacific goes back on offense, hunting some answers. Ashlyn Campbell with some nice moves on top of the key there. A senior trying to make a name for herself now at Warner Pacific. Rody gonna try the three. This one's good. And the UG native feeling right at home with a big three. Perhaps the boost Warner Pacific needed as that wraps up the first quarter. But all ducks here early. It's 23 to 5 as we step aside in the exhibition game. All ducks so far. Peyton Scott with three points. Philly Che, we saw score recently. The Ducks continue to get different players involved here. But it'll be Warner Pacific starting with possession. Campbell over to Tonkin. This one poked out by Long, but a foul will be called. It's more of the same for Oregon's defense. We've seen them trying to get after every ball on it seems like every possession. They forced plenty of turnovers, 12 so far from the Knights. And I like that pressure that Ari Long looked to put on the Warner Pacific player. She's a sophomore transfer coming in from Washington last year. Again, a young player that's looking to make a name for herself, but playing on a team that had a lot of experience, you know she's going to bring the pressure to this court for Oregon. Ashlyn Campbell trying to get it inside to me, who has it wrestled away by Deja Kelly. Kelly goes down to it, fighting for the ball. No lack of intensity here, even in an exhibition from the Ducks. Oregon comes away with possession. Like you said, Deja Kelly hiding on that foul line there, still having her arm to where her player is, but making sure that she can sneak in and help. No matter who is on that foul line, she's going to be there to help try to take the ball away. Kelly gets it to Wagner, over to Long, who turns around and will put up the mid-range shot. No good, but guess who? It's Philly Che on the rebound. It's what she brings to Oregon, so dominant in the post as she picks up another board and another score. Che, a very high IQ player. If she, shots aren't falling on one side of the block, she can easily, with her height, take one step over, put the ball on the ground for a second, and put it up on the left side. It'll be a shot from Grossbeck. That one finds iron and another rebound for Ari Long. It's Deja Kelly who will try the shot. No good, and a rebound goes to Warner Pacific. Deja Kelly, a big name from Oregon, coming all the way from North Carolina, traveling from east to west. 
another player that's just looking so confident out on the court, even though this is her first time playing in Eugene, Oregon. And Kelly just returned to practice this week, had been dealing with some injuries to her lower half, as had Filipina Che, but both of them active and playing in this exhibition against Warner Pacific. Oregon looks ahead to Monday night where they will take on Cal Baptist in their season opener. Kelly Graves will return some starters to the court. Looks like Fiso checking back in, Atute, the two both freshmen back in the game. And on that play there, Deja Kelly doing a good job trying to keep her eye on the ball as well as her player, but the Warner Pacific player doing an even better job, Makili Tonkin, noticing that Deja Kelly has her attention on the ball, making a quick backdoor cut, and even though Shea was there to try to stop her, her feet were not set, and that brings her to the free throw line. Tonkin has 52 starts over her two, students, two seasons with Warner Pacific, an experienced member of this roster. This is her second free throw, and the rebound goes to the newbie inserted Amina Muhammad. Spiso back the other way, a nifty pass inside to Tute, who scores. The freshman connection pays off for the Ducks, who go up by 22. That's exactly what you want to see if you're Kelly Gray's watching your two true freshmen on the floor connect like that. Atute, a strong IQ play from her there, waiting for the Warner Pacific, who's coming in hot, to go pa blow past her and just put the ball up for an easy layup. And our first look at Blake Barbie, who puts the shot up for the Knights. It rims out, rebounded by Long, or by Falatea, excuse me. Over to Deja Kelly. Deflected now to Fiso. Another shot from Fiso. She's fearless, pulling that trigger. This one comes up a little long. And pushing the pace back the other way is Grossback, who just has it ripped out of her hands by Kelly. It's going to be a foul, or no, a jump ball, excuse me. Yeah, and you can hear Kelly Grace from the sideline telling his girls to move in the paint, but that's exactly what Tute did really well here, noticing the defenders around her coming, flying in, making sure that she can get her feet set and just go up with nobody else around her. Fiso showing off the handle a little bit, gets it to Muhammad, who scores. Muhammad there running the baseline, trying to establish herself in the paint as one of those big, big players, trying to make sure that she can get the ball over any of these Warner Pacific girls and put a shot up. And Fiso gets the ball right back. She scores again. The freshman, Katie Fiso, all over the score sheet here with the turnovers and the scoring. She gets another bucket. It's 31 to six, Oregon. So seven minutes left in the half. The Knights will reset. And a guy checks into the game. She's the ball handler now. Will look to make her first collegiate start this season as Grossbeck gets it to Tonkin, who will score. Tonkin definitely the most confident among this Warner Pacific roster approaching the basket. As Falateo will get it aside to Atute. Kelly drives, knocks down Tonkin, sets up the three. This one is no good. Warner Pacific did a great job on that last possession, setting some off-screen picks, which enabled Tonkin to get into the paint and put up that layup there. That's what they're doing really well, moving inside the paint. And it's Grossbeck who passes it right to Muhammad. Kelly hit the deck on that one, but up with no issue. And guess again, it's Fiso who scores again. So Fiso, once again, making her impact felt. She's been the standout of this first half for the Ducks. Fiso now with 10 points on the night, reaching double digits for her, again, looking as confident as ever. And that will be the 16th turnover for Warner Pacific. Sets up Deja Kelly's attempt, and she scores easily. So there's been four turnovers in the last two and a half minutes for Warner Pacific. Oregon's getting a hand on all of these passes. And that's Warner Pacific, you know, getting tired out from the pressure that Oregon's putting on them. Like you can see just now, another turnover for the Oregon Ducks. Kelly, two a two take for two. And that's going to set up a timeout for Warner Pacific. Jimmy Smith wants to talk things over as Oregon continues to stretch their commanding lead. And you can see here Deja Kelly continuing to put the pressure on these Warner Pacific girls no matter how far they're up in the score. And in an exhibition game, this is your time to show it your main row. And Elisa Medius, who returns to Eugene after a summer spent in Paris where she picked up a gold medal with Germany in three on three basketball. So a lot of new for the Ducks like we talked about in the opening, but a season a year ago, they want to leave in the rearview mirror. 
Exactly, and Oregon leaving, like you said earlier, a Pac-12 conference that had so many great teams, including USC, UCLA, with players like Kiki Rice and Cameron Brink, who now, of course, is in the WNBA, but entering a new conference with new challenges, which is going to be very exciting for the Ducks. The Ducks 7-5 all-time against teams currently in the Big Ten. Conference play set to begin a little later down the road for Oregon. Is just looking to figure out their lineup in this exhibition against Warner Pacific. It's been a lot of positives so far. The Ducks find themselves up by 29 points. And I like that attempt from Barbie there, trying to go for an underhand layup, and that was even better effort by Amalia Sales, trying to keep the ball in play, but Warner Pacific just moving a little too quickly for their girls to keep up with. Deja Kelly drains the three. Picture perfect jumper puts Oregon at 40. So the transfer getting reacclimated to time on the court after dealing with the leg injury all fall long. She looks 100% here in her minutes tonight. Again, she's been a dominant force for the Ducks already tonight in terms of scoring points, putting pressure on defense, getting in girls' faces. She's doing phenomenal. 4-10 goes to her left. Driving on Falatea, but flips it right to Deja Kelly. Kelly, a long pass, finds Fiso. Fiso, no look pass to Muhammad, whose shot is no good. Rebound by Atute, who scores it. Muhammad with a little smile there, knowing that sh that should have been an easy layup, but a beautiful pass from Katie Fiso, already acknowledging where her players are, reading the offense how, and how they're set up. That's very impressive for a freshman. It's a big step up to make it to the NCAA level for Fiso, but she's no stranger to the big moments. Put up 29 points a year ago in the Washington State title game. She's the star for Garfield High School as they took home the state title. And the lineups readjust here with just under four minutes remaining in the first half. Back in the game, Sophia Bell. It's Alex Saunders who gets it to Grossback, but this one taken away by Bell. Philly Che back in the game as well. This one goes ahead to Ari Long. Underneath to Mevious, no problem on the layup. Morgan moving fluidly on the court here tonight. They expand their lead with an excellent bucket for Mevious. And it's exciting to see all these Oregon players who are coming from so many different places, whether different places in the United States, different schools, or across seas, learning to gel with each other and connect on offense like that. Five international players on this Oregon roster. Brings a diversified approach as Emily Fortin is guarded by Long. Looks to get to the bucket. And this one's good. That was a beautiful pass from Emily Fortin there, the senior guard from Warner Pacific, and no look pass under the basket. Ari Long tries the three for the Ducks, it's no good. 44 to 10 as we approach the three minute mark, and yet another touchdown for the Knights, sets up the two on one. Long gonna take it herself and right. score it herself. Amalia Sales trying to establish herself under the basket, but knows that her feet are not set and her body's not there. Might as well give her the points to draw the foul. Sala is looking to reset this lineup for Warner Pacific. Again, it's Grossbeck working to her left. It's just nothing falling for the Knights here in the first half. A three from Bell. That one's good. Sophia Bell puts it in. Showing off that improved jump shot. She hits the triple, and Oregon finds himself a point away from 50 in just the first half. Sophia Bell, another one of those anticipated returners coming back from Oregon. Ended her season with an injury, but before that started Oregon's first 21 games and had a phenomenal, phenomenal presence on the court. Looks like we're going to have a jump ball. Or excuse me, this one will stay with the Knights. Looks like Bell was wrestling for that one with Grossback down on the court. As we take another look at the Sophia Bell three. Yeah, and Oregon's doing a great job against this Warner Pacific team, transitioning the ball at such a fast pace, not allowing the Warner Pacific defense to make a transition and come back and get set. Whether it's taking it to the basket, in the paint, or outside the three-point line, Oregon is so diversified in where they're able to shoot on the floor. So there's plenty of options, especially when you're breaking away as fast as Oregon is. Sophia Bell, one of the returners in her second year for Oregon, started the first 21 games of the season a year ago for the Ducks before suffering a season-ending injury. Good to see her back in the score column there. Hits the three on Oregon's last possession. They lead the Knights by 39. And Warner Pacific still doing a good job at getting shots off. Just they're not hot today. They're not falling, and that's difficult for a team, especially 
when it could be maybe even a little bit of a closer game if these shots were falling. It's gross back to inbound, and she throws it right to Mevius. Mevius picks that one off, gets it to Long. Long guarded by Salas. It's going to be Philly Che who steps back. Mevius looks to pass, but will now drive. It's once again over to Che. Ball ends up back with Sophia Bell. A lot of passing, ends up with a shot attempt from Long, whose shot is just a, a bit too strong, no good. Again, it's Rhodey. We've seen her hit a three already tonight. She drains the mid-range shot. Back in the scoring column is Warner Pacific. Peyton Rhodey doing a good job at recognizing Ari Long coming in way too hot. She's coming in too fast to get her feet set, able to pump fake and get a shot off there. Rambis to Long in the corner. No good, and a rebound goes to the Knights. Grossbeck again. Running the point, gets it to Rhodey. Amalia Sala is guarded by Mevius, and it ends up with Grossbeck. Driving on Rambis, does her best attempt to get a shot up, but the height disparity there, very evident. That one goes up and over the rim. Inside to Mevius, who scores on the other end. Mevius is another one of those players that no matter who you are in the paint, she will take you on and go up for that shot, whether she's going to get fouled or not. As long as she's putting up those layups, she makes it look so easy, even with a defender in her face. Sala is guarded closely by Long. Grosbeck sets up in the corner, trying to get around Bell. Philly Che just behind her, gets it inside. That one blocked by Rambis. Rambis rejected the shot. Down to the floor she goes. Looks like Oregon will stay with the ball. And it's easy to get caught up in the moment like that, even though the ball did go Oregon's way in that fast-paced transition. But here's an example of that working in Oregon's favor with that fast-paced transition. And Meave is going up for the shot, it working. But here, Rambis a little too excited to get the ball up the floor, not establishing it where it is in terms of her body positioning, losing the ball there. And luckily, though, stays with Oregon. Mevius with six points. She's three for three on shots so far tonight. We'll cross over once, guarded by Solace. Gets right to the basket and scores. Make it four for four as Mevius continues to jump off the floor here on both offense and defense for the Ducks. And if you blink, you might miss her. Mevius is so fast with her movement throughout the paint. And that wraps up an excellent first half for the Ducks. Triple zeros in the second quarter. Oregon, after one half, finds themselves leading Warner Pacific 53 to 12. A dominant opening half to this exhibition for the Ducks. And with Elisa Mevius, putting pressure not only on the girl that they're defending man-to-man, -man, but also being aware of their surroundings on who is around them on the court, not letting easy passes slip through, especially in the paint, doing a great job at concealing the ball. Starting on the court in the second half for Oregon, it'll be Peyton Scott, Amina Muhammad back in there, as well as Alexis Whitfield, Elisa Mevius in the game, or at least Mevius not in the game, excuse me, to go along with Nani Falatea. Warner Pacific's Amalia Salas looks to get the first bucket of the half. It's no good. And taking it back the other way will be Falatea. Inside to Sarah Rambis, and Rambis easily scores. Gets it off the glass and in. Flexing the strength there. And it makes this a 55-12 game with the first points of the second half. Oregon, you can see here, setting up very nicely on defense, taking turns in the paint to make sure that somebody always has eyes on the entire court. Again, it's Falatea back the other way. Looks to get it to Whitfield, who easily penetrates and easily scores. Off the glass again. She glided right to the basket and put it up uncontested. And that's something that's been really impressive about Oregon showing tonight is just their connection that they have. Whitfield was able to get to the basket because Muhammad saw her coming and cleared a lane for her, which, again, takes high IQ, takes that connection that this new team already has. Alex Saunders, the Oregon native sophomore, with the bucket for the Warner Pacific Knights. Salez, Tonkin, Saunders, Grosbeck, and me on the court to begin the third quarter for Jimmy Smith's team as Sarah Rambis knocks down the easy mid-range jumper. Just bucket after bucket for this Ducks offense. They've looked extremely deep here through just over a half as Rambis gets another steal. It's going to be turnover number 24 for the Knights. Salas able to knock this one out of play. Goes off Rambis and will head back to Warner Pacific, but Olivia just 
the ability for this Ducks team to get the ball back into their possession, it's been dominant here tonight. Exactly. And you're able to do that when you have so much energy in your players and you're able to have so much energy in your players when you have a deep bench when coach kelly greaves can sub in players in and out give players time to rest put others in refresh refresh it keeps the energy alive and keeps oregon able to keep this pressure on on defense and offense and in breakaway situations scott right up against amalia solace she'll get it away to grossbeck whose shot is no good Peyton Scott will take it the other way. In the corner, Whitfield shot fake. Lays it right underneath to Amina Muhammad, draws the whistle in the paint. And I like Warner's specific attempt to try to double Muhammad down in the paint, especially on the block. But when you're as dominant as Amina Muhammad is, look at her going up with that shot, knowing that she has, even though she has two girls on her, none of them have their feet set. And she's going to get fouled on the play, just throwing the ball up making sure that she can get to the foul line. And a reminder, nobody over six foot or six foot or over on the Warner Pacific Knights roster. There's six players on this Oregon roster over the six foot mark. So their size has been noticeable here tonight. They're using it to capitalize on some paints or some points in the paint, excuse me, as Amina Muhammad shoots free throws. Made two for two earlier tonight. Gets another one there. That puts the Ducks at 60. Amina Muhammad coming in as a junior transfer from Texas, making such an impact on her team down in Texas, being one of the players to bring Texas to the Elite Eight for the first time since 2004, learning from other veterans on her previous team, now bringing that experience to Oregon. Brody back in the game, driving on Falatea, but throws it right to Mevius. Mevius so fast getting back across the court. The first step has been remarkable as it's Falatea looking to get to the basket. This one's going to come up a bit short. But another turnover forced by the Ducks. Mevius has been all over that turnover column of the stat sheet. She's done a great job getting the ball back into the Ducks' hands. She was a defensive player of the year just one year ago in the Mid-Atlantic Conference where she was rookie of the year as a freshman. Guarding Campbell this time. And once again gets the ball right back. Looking to take it to the basket. Steps to her left and lays it in. <laughs> Elisa Mevius putting on a show. Both ends of the court making an impact. Excellent play there. Mevius comfortable going up, whether it's with her right hand or her left hand. If she has to switch in the middle of a drive, taking that Euro step around her defender, able to easily lay the ball up in the net. It looked effortless from her. And who else but Mevius on yet another turnover. She'll get it to Scott, who scores the easy layup. Elisa Mevius to Peyton Scott forces the timeout. The Ducks come out swinging in quarter number three. More turnovers, more points out the basket, and it was led by Elisa Mevius. She's shown off that move to her left a couple times. It's been magical for the Ducks here tonight. Elisa Mevius dominating the Ducks in terms of steals, even though at collectively Oregon's begin to put a lot of pressure on this Warner Pacific team. Mevius is the one that comes up with the ball in the end. She has seven steals. They say. Once again, Olivia Cleary from courtside as we resume action here in the third quarter. Oregon finds themselves ahead by a half century. It's 64 to 14 as Ashlyn Campbell tries to drive on Mevius. Grossbeck tries to get it to Campbell. Long possessions again and again for the Knights when they're not turning the ball over. They just can't seem to find the open looks they want. As Rhodey falls down, looking to pick it up, is Whitfield, and she does just that. Looking to go coast to coast, gets it to Fiso, who gets it to Scott. Back down inside, Atute with the score. No matter the lineup Kelly Graves sends out there against Warner Pacific, the Ducks look fluid and composed. As once again, the ball is picked by Mevius. She can take her time, and she scores yet again. Another turnover leads to a bucket from Elisa Mevius. And you can tell how confident she is out there, even after that most recent breakaway there, laying the ball in for layup. She doesn't even look to see if the ball is going in or not. She is already going back down the court to play defense. That's how confident she is in herself that she is going to make the shot. And again, Elisa Mevius spent the summer playing against the world's best. Gold medalist with Germany in three on three women's the Paris Olympics, but Step in competition seems to have benefited her as she continues to pick up turnovers and points. 
Finds herself with 12 in her first exhibition as a member of the Ducks. Six for six from the field. She was, look, I mean, look how confident she is just easily laying the ball up in the basket there. As a result of a net, yet another steal from her, she was named the 2023-2024 MAC Defensive Player of the Year, and that's not for nothing. Defensive Player of the Year picks up another steal and another score. Feels like we're living in Groundhog Day again and again. Mevius picking the pocket of the Warner Pacific Knights and taking it back the other way for the score. She's at 14, making a perfect seven for seven in this exhibition for the Ducks transfer. Salah's gonna try a three, it's no good, but goes off Whitfield out of bounds. So the ball will stay with Warner Pacific. Olivia, if you're the Knights, what do you have to change about your style of play in this game? You have to be able to read Oregon's defense. Something Oregon is doing really well is they're playing man-to-man, -man, but they're making sure that they always have a player with at least a foot in the paint. That girl or that player that has a foot in the paint can see the entire court, can watch for backdoor cuts. So you need to begin to draw the rest of your defenders into the paint so it gets a little bit more crowded there. So you can open up the opportunity for more mid-range shots, for more three-point shots. And the more you keep shooting, the more shots are going to fall. But if you're not shooting, you're not, you don't even have the opportunity to put points on the board. So if you can start to spread out the defense, or not spread out the defense, in this case, you want to kind of cluster them, especially in the paint to create more. Absolutely, as Oregon taking care of business here through two and a half quarters, they find themselves with a 56-point lead. Probably something that you would have expected with the Ducks taking on an NAIA opponent. This is their lone exhibition of the 2024-25 season. But if you're a Ducks fan, good to see that they are taking advantage of the opportunity already with 70 points on the board and we also remind you that Warner Pacific has broken across the 30 mark for turnovers three attempted there comes up short that one was taken by Kiki Brooks the junior guard for the Knights but we keep harping on the turnovers but it's because they keep happening again and again Oregon able to get the ball back as Katie Fiso runs the offense here with just under five minutes left in the third quarter and Kelly Graves trusting Katie Fiso, a true freshman, to run the offense and bring the ball up the court as the point guard for Oregon really says something about how confident he is in her style of play. So and after Mevius' first miss of the day, it's Tonkin taking things back the other way for the Knights. Amalia Salas with the ball now. And it goes off of Mevius out of bounds. So even when she doesn't know where the ball is coming from, Mevius is able to disrupt this Warner Pacific offense. Gets right in between the passer and the receiver there. Knocks it out of bounds, it'll stay with the Knights. On the court right now for them, it's Alexis Mee, Brooks, Barbie, Tonkin, and Salas. As yet another turnover ends up with Mevius. Mevius gets it to Bell, who sends it aside to Long, and that one's out of bounds. And Oregon again, getting caught up in the excitement of how well they're playing. Maybe moving a little bit too fast would have been nice to see them pass the ball back out to Peyton Scott and kind of reset their offense, maybe look to get the ball to Katie Fiso again or down to a Tute, two freshmen who have shown that they deserve to be here. Another turnover. Who else but Elisa Mevius? She scores it yet again. Sounding like a broken record here courtside, but again and again it's Mevius taking it to the cup. After the turnover, she scores. Just an excellent performance here in her first action in an Oregon universe, uniform for Elisa Mevius. Solace now trying to set up shop for the Knights. Tonkin looking to get it down under, but it comes right back out. It's going to end up with a desperation heave from Solace. No good, and the rebound goes to Tute. Got a whistle on the court. Looks like this one's going to go against the Ducks. Excuse me, it's actually against McKeeley Tonkin, so the ball will stay with the Ducks. And it'll be... Ahis uh, Atute, who Kelly Graves called this season a double-double machine, was very excited about what she could bring to this Ducks offense. And Atute, the other true freshman out on the court for Oregon, coming out of halftime, she was leading the team in total points and in total rebounds. She is just one of those dominant forces. She can control the baseline, establish herself on the block, be a force for those offensive, defensive rebounds. That's something that Oregon needs coming into the season. Pass intended for Mevius gets out of bounds into the first row of seats here at Matthew Knight Arena, so a rare moment of poor communication from the Ducks. They cannot end up completing that pass, but Mevius checks out to a nice applause here at Matthew Knight. Their action is done for now. A great start to her Ducks career, even in just a quick exhibition match. 
And how nice must that, must that feel? This is your first time you're stepping on the Oregon court and you leave with an applause from the fans that shows how you've already established yourself as a player that's going to be so good for Oregon this year. This one falls. Up to 16 points now for the Knights. It was a beautiful backdoor cut for Salas there. Warner Pacific did exactly what they should have, spreading Oregon's defense out, creating the space for a backdoor cut, losing her defender there. And Matute fighting for the rebound. She gets it to set up the three from Falatea. It's good. The BYU transfer knocks it down. 39% career free throw, three-point shooter. She drains that one. Oregon's up to 75. Warner Pacific doing a good job swinging the ball here, using the paint cross court. Bell with the rebound ahead to Fiso. No one in between her and the basket, and no problem with the layup. Fiso scores it yet again. Both true freshmen in this game in double digits. Good audition in front of their head coach here in the exhibition match. Orton trying to work with the ball. Instead, it's picked off by the Ducks. Ari Long across to Bell. Bell back to Falatea. Her second attempt at the three, it's no good. But a rebound again went off of Tute. She's done a great shot getting to the basketball again and again, but this time unable to get the handle on it. Heads out of bounds as Sammy Wagner enters the game again. Wagner, one of those sophomore returners, looking to make a name for herself in this now team that has so much depth to it. She had no stars last year, but again, she's so tall. She's so dominant for rebounds for Oregon. And during this exhibition game, this is the perfect time to try to make a name for yourself and say, coach, this is why I deserve a spot on this team. It'll be Fiso looking to set up shop. Gets it to a Tute, one freshman to another, but the shot no good. Rebounded by Wagner, who scores it, and the foul. <laughs> Wagner right back in the game and right back on the score sheet. The tough end one sends her to the line. Like I was just saying, offensive rebounds are so key to any team's style of play. That gives your team a second chance at scoring. And Wagner took advantage of that, going right up with the ball. Warner Pacific not able to get their feet set. Censored right to the line. Oregon winning the rebound battle 35-19. to As that shot is no good, it ends up knocking off Falatea's shoulder and ending up out of bounds. It'll be Warner Pacific ball. 7-0 run for the Ducks in the last minute 15. Solace and the Knights trying to break that right here. Fortin loses it once again. It's Long picking her pocket. She'll take it back the other way. Crosses over once, gets it inside to a Tute who scores it. Great pass from Ari Long, who Kelly Graves said brings so much versatility to the Oregon backcourt. Said she passes at a high level. We saw a bit of that there. She picks up the clean assist to Arissa Tute. Under a minute remaining in play. Grossbeck trying to get to the basket. From the corner now, Grossbeck, her shot rims out. Rebound Oregon, rebound Nani Fulataya. Gets it to a Tute as Graves lets the young players play here. Long tries the three and hits it. She connects. Make it 84 to 16 in favor of the Ducks with one possession left here in the third quarter. Atuche playing super smart, whether it's working the block and whoever, whatever player is on her, setting an off screen pick that enabled Long to get that shot off. Very high IQ basketball player. Inside. Looks like Saunders who gets it out to Salas. Salas gonna try and score, but it's no good. Had the ball knocked out of her hand. Doesn't even get it up towards the rim on that attempt. So with just under four seconds left in the third quarter, Oregon working on a 68 point lead. It'll be an inbound to Rody. The last shot of the third quarter, no good. And that will do it. One quarter remains in the exhibition between the Ducks and the Warner Pacific Knights. It's been all Oregon here so far. We'll step aside for a quick break when we come back the fourth quarter on Big Ten Plus.
back inside Matthew Knight Arena. The Ducks working on an 84 to 16 lead here in their tune-up matchup against the Warner Pacific Knights. Even in an exhibition matchup, decent turnout here at Matthew Knight Arena. Good participation and shout as well in between the two quarters as we get started in the fourth. It's Alexis Whitfield who gets to the basket. She puts it right through. Oregon's got 86. Whitfield did a great job there reading the defense, sneaking behind two defenders who didn't even know she was coming from behind and was able to lay up an easy layup there. So on the floor for the Ducks now, Whitfield, Scott, Wagner, Tilliander, and Ari Long. It's Peyton Scott who comes up with it going back the other way. She'll send it over to Whitfield who tries the three. No good, but rebound for Tilliander who scores. And the Swedish sophomore gets her first basket of the game. Yet another Oregon player on the board. Oregon again making sure that there's at least one to two players in the paint watching to make sure no backdoor cuts gets away from them. This is exactly what you would have wanted to see from Oregon if you're Kelly Graves as Rhodey misses the three and the ball ends up in the Warner Pacific bench. They've taken this game seriously. They've played aggressively from the opening tip and it's reflected in the scoreboard against an opponent that if you're this Oregon coaching staff, you'd like to see a score like this. You'd like to see them blowing them out and that's exactly what the Ducks have done. And Wagner did a great job there contesting that shot even though she was in the pain at first. Her speed right there showing, able to make it out to the three-point line, getting a hand up in the face of Wagner's shooter, causing the shot to not fall. Wagner again is going to end up with the ball, but gets it over to Whitfield. Tilliander over to Scott, who drives and kicks it out to the corner. Whitfield will get it inside to Tilliander, but it's knocked away. Coming up with the ball is Sol Solis. She's looking to get it ahead to Tonkin, who loses it out of bounds. Ends up right in the coach's lap for the Knights. So even on a nice play like that where they are able to get the stop against Oregon, just discombobulated going the other way. And Tonkin was doing the right thing, looking on the court for her players, but just thinking a little too far ahead, not making sure that she had the ball secured. Sammy Wagner knocks down the jumper. She's got four as she hits her second bucket of the fourth quarter. Oregon now with 90 points as there's still eight minutes remaining in this one. Solace in the corner, looking to get inside, but it's picked off by Tilliander. Tilliander over to Long. Long, the sophomore transfer, throws it ahead, but it's out of bounds. This one's going to go back to the Knights. A little spurt of energy there from Wagner's Alex Saunders, coming all the way down from the other side of the court, getting a hand on that ball, stopping Oregon's momentum that they had. So Scott gets the inbound. I would imagine we've seen the last of Philly Che here tonight, as well as Deja Kelly. Two of the big stars for Oregon that were dealing with lower half injuries this fall. Both able to get into the game. They suit up and play in this exhibition. I can see another score there by Tilliander, but Kelly Gray's going to take it easy the rest of the way with Kelly and Shea. They remain on the bench, resting up for Monday's season opener. Again, that'll be against California Baptist. Tonkin will try a three off the side of the backboard. Going back the other way, it'll be Whitfield. Ari Long tried the save, but it ends up out of bounds, and this one will stay with the Knights. We'll go back towards the Knights as Alexi Mee checks in. And something Oregon's doing really well this late in the game, you're up by so much, they're still on defense communicating, and that communication is essential, especially for players like Mee's and right now Peyton Scott, who's controlling the top of the key. Her back is to everything that's happening behind her. So you need to have a team that communicates to you well who's coming to set a pick on what side. And that takes connection, that takes trust. And the fact that Oregon's already showing that here is, again, amazing. Grosbeck unable to score. But again, this team, like you said, seeing them communicate and play together is such a good sign because there's a lot of new players, a lot of players coming from other systems, other rosters. Not sure of what their role might be. Again, Kelly Graves mentioned that the roster will be fluid as Long's three is no good. She'll look for the reload, but it's knocked around by Warner Pacific. And on the ground with it is Tilliander. Looks like it's going to be a jump ball. Fluid roster entering the regular season here in 2024-25. Sophia Bell checks back in, but we don't have a great picture yet of what the starters are going to look like. So many guards on this roster for Oregon. We'll see how that shakes out. All of them playing well tonight. Which, honestly, for Kelly Graves, that's kind of a problem you want to have, is so many options who are so good and can fit into any kind of matchup. 
you want to have a tough time choosing who's going to start for your team. Oregon with a new recruiting coordinator as well. Kelly Graves able to bring over former Utah assistant Jerese Freeman as Bell gets the steal going back the other way, or Whitfield, excuse me. Scott Tilliander and now Bell. As Whitfield's shot fake leads into the layup, but it's no good. Rebound by me. Freeman, though, now in charge as both an assistant and recruiting coordinator, and Kelly Graves was raving about how much she brought to this roster. Put her in that class with all these great transfers who are actually suiting up on the court. But she did a big job this busy summer for the Ducks as they were able to bring so many large parts of this new roster together. Another turnover for the Knights. This one's coming back with Sammy Wagner, who throws it ahead to Peyton Scott. Scott going to take her time letting the Oregon offense set up. That's exactly what you want to do if you're Oregon. Take your time this late in the fourth. Wagner to Bell, and Whitfield's now got eight. She scores her fourth bucket. Oregon closing in on 100 points here. Just under five minutes to play. Tough abilities on the shot, finishing for Warner Pacific. We have a whistle on the court. Looks like Rambis and Nani Falatea will check back into the game. We'll talk about Falatea for a bit. Graves described how good of a three-point shooter she could be as we take another look at the Alexis Whitfield rebound again. She's got eight points, but Falatea so good from behind the line in her time at BYU. Graves acknowledging that that was something they struggled with last year. He says that's somewhere Nani can help us improve. Ball now with Rambis, but back to Falatea. She'll drive to her left and is going to score. Nice floater there. Falatea is up to five points. And that's something Warner Pacific has struggled to do is keep a player inside the paint to stop a drive like that, but she was able to find a wide open lane through the middle of the paint. And there's Falatea on the score. Easily takes it to the basket. We have another timeout. Jimmy Smith wants to step aside. And we'll step aside as well here on Big Ten Plus. Again, Oregon leading the Warner Pacific Knights 98. Going through the schedule last year, of course, Oregon had won the, their Pac-12 conference in 2020. But in 2021-22, 20 wins. They've matched that with 20 more wins two seasons ago. But last season, under 500, a 2-16 and 16 record in conference, as we mentioned. Olivia, that's a number that's just going to have to get better in the Big Ten. Absolutely. And again, as we mentioned earlier, Oregon basketball is able to turn the page. All of Oregon sports is in entering the Big Ten now. You're seeing an entire new kind of face of competition, but also not totally entirely. The Oregon Ducks coming into the Big Ten, they saw teams like Washington and USC last year, and they're going to see them again as they were schools that also came into the Big Ten. And just to think of USC has Juju Hawkins, one of those standout players once in a generation. Um, so they're still going to be facing these tough teams. However, coming into the Big Ten, you're going to see other teams like Ohio State who are also very dominant. But it gives the team a chance to establish a new brand for themselves, play against totally different teams that they haven't played against before. It's going to be very exciting for them. Absolutely. Of course, Ohio State finished first in the Big Ten two out of the last three seasons. Oregon, in their long history of playing collegiate basketball, no victories against the Buckeyes. Something that's going to have to change as Oregon looks to make their presence felt in the Big Ten. Some new check-ins for the Ducks. It looks like Wagner's going to be back on the court along with Mevious. But Olivia, the Pac-12 last year, like you said, it was very, very difficult to find any wins for the Ducks. And you can talk about how that relates to the talent on the roster, but really the talent of that conference as a whole, it was just loaded. And you kept looking at an Oregon schedule that, whether it was Colorado, whether it was Juju Watkins and USC, like you mentioned, there was just so many difficult matchups for the Ducks, and they weren't able to come away with many wins. And another team that played in that Pac-12 conference that also is transitioning into the Big Ten is going to be UCLA. With last year, they had a fantastic sophomore squad led by Kiki Rice, who they are going to see again this year. So, yes, you're still going to face those difficult teams. But the Pac-12 in general last year, just a really good conference for basketball. I mean, you had Stanford led by Cameron Brink, who, of course, you're not going to see anymore. She's all playing in the WNBA for the LA Sparks. But you're entering, like I said, a new conference. Not saying the challenges are going to get any easier, but Pac-12, a very well-known conference for basketball, had a lot of talent, and now you have a chance to come into this new conference and establish yourself as that team that's going to bring the talent and going to be the team that you have to watch out for. Elisa Mevius doing a great job still, even in the final minutes of this game. 
She scores the bucket on the previous possession to get her 18th point of the night to get Oregon across the century mark. It's 102-16. The Big Ten will be difficult for Oregon. Of course, their season will start with some non-conference opponents, which Kelly Graves is very excited about the difficulty of those opponents as well. So a lot to learn about this Oregon roster, which all of a sudden is very battle-tested. So even though they are entering a new conference, plenty of NCAA tournament experience, that's definitely somewhere the Ducks would love to get back to in 2024-25. Some of the tougher teams they're also going to face this year besides Ohio State is going to be Iowa, even though they do not have the infamous Caitlin Clark anymore. Still going to be a fantastic team. The program they've built there has just run so deep, so it's going to be exciting to be able to face such a well team like that, as well as Indiana, even Michigan State, teams that had winning records last year. And this is also what Oregon wants, is you want to play against those good teams and get that experience, learn from teams that – also play very well. What can you do better? How can you compete against them? This is, there should be nothing but excitement for Oregon going into conference play this season. As Tilliander puts up the shot, it's no good. It will end up with Warner Pacific. But for Oregon, they were exceptionally aggressive in the transfer portal for the first time in recent memory. Of course, a new aspect to this college basketball roster building puzzle, but Oregon did everything they could in that transfer portal. They're carrying a larger roster than they previously had, and I think it really just speaks to depth. Last year, of course, the Peyton Scott injury we mentioned, she's hopefully going to be healthy for the Ducks this year. We've seen her on the court a couple times here tonight, but Peyton Scott missed all of last year. Grace Van Sloot, one of the stars for the Ducks, had questionable health on and off the court for Oregon last year. But again, it just kind of felt like for the 2023-24 Ducks a year ago, you were never sure who you were going to see in the starting five. It might be some walk-ons, it might be some players who were freshman playing with very little experience this year it seems like Kelly Graves and of course the new recruitment coordinator Freeman have done everything they can to make this an experienced group but also a deep group yeah and like you said I mean those injuries to Peyton Scott and Grace Van Sloot last year were detrimental to Oregon's cane play you never knew who you they were going to start it was a tough season this year you never want to see a player get hurt but because Oregon runs so deep now and I know it's really early on to say this it's just the exhibition game we're well, almost an hour into their season, but you can already tell how deep this bench runs. So forbid if there is ever an injury, you have options. You can work with your team. You can throw, there's many groups of five you can throw out onto this floor, and Kelly Graves should be confident in every single one of them. Emily Fortin hits the three for Warner Pacific, gets the Knights across the 20 point mark as we are under 40 seconds remaining here in the exhibition. Again, 107 to 21, the Ducks dominating this exhibition. They're effectively tuned up as Sammy Wagner tries the three. Just a matter of closing out this final minute here for Oregon, who's done everything that you could have asked for them. They've gotten as many players as they could out on the court. They've tried different rotations. We've seen everyone from the true freshmen to the transfers making their impact felt as one of those freshmen, Katie Fiso, looks to dribble out the final seconds of the clock. Her three is good. It's going to get Fiso up to 15 points in the exhibition, an impressive start for her. Then Warner Pacific will take it back the other way, looking to wrap this one up. And that's a huge story for tonight is Katie Fiso and Faith Atute, two freshmen. And yes, again, it's an exhibition game, but that's the confidence you want to see from Oregon. And that will do it. Your final score, 110 to 19. Business as usual for the Ducks to get off to an emphatic start in their first exhibition of the 2024-25 season. Oregon does everything you could hope for them. They'll shake hands with Warner Pacific as we wrap up this exhibition. But Olivia, just give me your final thoughts on this game. What'd you like that you saw from the Ducks? 